Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag. Hashtag. W-A-W. What a week. What a week. Week. Welcome back to another episode of Wow, What a Week. Yo, what a year it's been. Oh, wait. It's only the end of January. Hey, but nah. Listen, it's feeling a lot longer than that. Hopefully, that December money has lasted. Well, it may be the end of a month, but it's the start of a show. So, welcome back to another episode of Wow, What a Week. This is Wow. What a week. What a week. This kid really kicks. Yes, indeed, she kicks ass. She's got a performer's name that gives your face that twisted expression as you try and figure out how to pronounce it. But not long after, your face changes to that other expression of amusement as you appreciate the talent that she has. Please give a warm welcome to Farida Mitsileng, a.k.a. who? Farofai. Farofai. Yes. You see, because why <laughs> Farofai? What's in the name? Why, why Farofai? Um, it actually, my, my friend at the time when we were in varsity first year, yeah. Um, she couldn't really say, like, a lot of people couldn't say Farida. I don't know why. It's really simple. So they started calling me Faro. Okay. And then someone else started calling me Fifi. And I was like, but I'm not Rafilwe. So I was like, wow, okay. I'm looking for a social media name. Started on Twitter and I was like, hmm, Farify doesn't sound like something a lot of people have Absolutely. or know. Yes. So it's mine not now. E- not even in Egypt. You get me. So, yes. I mean, hello, the original. So, I, oh, I thought it was Farrow because you're a mommy, you see. Wow, 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 Not a wow. mother. There's a mommy and a mommy. A no. <laughs> big, big difference, you see. I'm done. So how does a Mopedi girl end up with an Arabic name? Actually, Kemotswana. So Omotswana? Yes. Yeah, but now you're one of us. Yes. Jeez, okay. Kemotswana. Um, my dad actually converted to Islam. Ah. And ah. my immediate family is all Muslim. So myself, my dad, my mom, my sister, and my brother. Oh, wow. Yes. So d- d- did dad say why he converted to Islam? No, nah, I didn't ask questions. I just followed the leader. Because I came into it and everybody was there. So it was normal to me. But I think he really appreciated the values of Islam. Mm. And he resonated with a lot of the beliefs that ah, yes. the religion has. And then where now? Where do you stand? Uh, ish, I don't know. At the current moment, I'm a human being living life. Yeah. And hopefully the universe will find me <laughs> along the way. Because right now things are tricky like. It's actually weird. When I was 18, I almost converted to Islam. Really? And I remember saying to my uh, Roman Catholic mother that I'm <laughs> thinking of converting to Islam. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it was Nikisi Shaw when I was yeah, talking yeah, to yeah. her. But my mom, being my mom, said, listen, generally religion is guidance. Yes. So I don't care where you get your guidance from. If you are going to convert, as long as you show you want to convert, and the reason somehow makes sense, yes. by all means do it. You've got my blessings. That's good. That's when I realized that my mom is cool. She's really cool. You're, She's really, really cool. But you lost your mom when you were, what, 14? 15, yes. 15. Yes. Tell us about mom. My mom, actually, what's really weird is I had a call with my sister two days ago. Yeah. And in the middle of our conversation, she was like, wow, you look like our mother. She pulled out a picture and I was like, that's my twin. My mom was really like, she's very quiet, very reserved. Mm. She's very funny. Mm. Very funny. Also, is that where the comedy comes from? My dad and my mom, hilarious together. They made all of us laugh without intent, actually. So there were were a couple goals, Moose. Look, they were good looking. (laughs) They were funny. They had great dresses. I mean, I tried to look great. She was a really sweet woman. She was very Mm. stern. She was very strict. My mom, she had words with eyes. Mm. She never spoke. Mm. She gave you a look. And you know what that means. So you lose your mom as you are going through puberty. Yes. You're going from girl to woman. Yes. Are there things you look at in terms of how dad stepped up that you realize that, wow, what a dude. Definitely. Because obviously he had to step up because, Definitely. you know, his life partner is gone. Yes. You know, chera hai eva ili. Yo, ene mutua hai, yo, umusi, you know I'm mean? heartbroken. No, do you I like think, imagine? I think... My dad showed me a lot of strength mm. and he also was very understanding of the situation itself. I was the last born, so I was the last project. Ish, 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 ish. The very last project. Mm. And they did really well with my brother and my sister. Mm. So I think there was a lot of pressure, but also my sister stepped up a lot mm. in trying to fill the gaps. 
because she was very close to my mom. Oh, yes. And she had a lot of the characteristics my mom had. So it felt like, you know what, my mom's on holiday. For, for a really long time, I kind of consoled myself with, my mom's on holiday, she's okay, mm. she's fine. Mm. I still have my family. Mm. But then it just, there are times where it's like, this feels really surreal. Sure. It's very different. So how did comedy happen? Comedy happened as a form of, I don't know, I think it's a personality trait. Mm. I think I always had the knack for trying to entertain my friends. Okay. And I think they appreciated my comedy, but they also joined in and made it feel comfortable for me. Mm. So I think for the longest time, I'd always had it. I just didn't know how to hone in on it. Ah, yes. yes. Okay, so how did you hone in on it uh, and, and, and start making money from it? And did the comedy happen first or did social media fame happen first? I think they happened together. Okay. The reason I, why I got into social media was because I wanted to become an actress. Mm. And at the time... Going to auditions was so discouraging because I didn't fit the brief. I didn't look like anyone that they mm. were looking for. And and many, and many auditions generally are just ticking a box because they know who yeah, they want. Yeah. They already know who they want. Yeah. Mm. So it's just like, you know, we're doing this for the paperwork. We know who's really going to take this. Absolutely. So a friend of mine who I was working with at the time, we were, both went to after. She was my senior mm. and she was a producer at one of the shows that I was interning at had said to me, maybe you should use your social media platform. Instagram at the time had like 15 second video um, feature. Can you believe we had to make 15 seconds work? At some I stage? want to cry because <laughs> what's 15 seconds? I need to say a lot. But surely being forced to get to the point in 15 seconds also hones your skills. Yes. Yes. So that by the time it gets to 30 seconds or to one minute, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're so good at a 15 seconder. A minute is like you've been given a new lease of life. Literally. Yeah. So it became a little bit of a challenge, but she was like, use your platform. Mm. Just create this character. I mean, you already have it. Just maybe name it Farrah Five Fridays and that became a thing. Yes. And I would hashtag Farrah Five Fridays and every Friday I would drop videos. What is, what's the biggest Farrah Five uh, video to date? Ah. Uh, <laughs> It's the Siavana video. Mm, tell us about it. So I was actually at work mm, on a work break and sure. a friend of mine was shooting something down the road from my office. And he asked me, please, can you come and shoot with us for like five minutes? We just want you to do a prank. And I was like, okay, cool. I sat in his car. I saw a pair of sunglasses. I was bored. I put them on and I was like, well, tomorrow's Friday. I might as well shoot my video. Little did I know I was going to create a pandemic of Siavana. And that's mm. how I became Verify. DJ Zintle actually retweeted one of my videos. Oh, and that doesn't help. Uh, doesn't help because the <laughs> next day I was like, I have 10,000 followers. Who are these people? Yeah, it was really cool. It was such a cool experience. How do you translate that to money though? Can you, do you? Um, so the way it translated into money for me was quite recently, maybe like four or five years ago. The first, when it, when it, Turned into real money was when I got my first acting job. Mm. I did a cameo on Ses Topla and I came as myself as a character. Yes. Got paid for that and I was like, oh, people get paid to just show up. All right, cool. My sister said, I'm going to manage you. So she managed me and she mm. got me because she was already in the industry. And I was like, okay. Then um, brands started using influencers to start promoting products. And mm. I was like, okay, that's where I need to be. Exactly. That's where the money is. Mm. So I just kept doing that. And they just kept calling. You get, and now we are here. So is it sustainable though? Are you sustaining your lifestyle, your life um, with what you do? I think with everything, you need to create the sustenance. Okay. So being consistent in your, in your craft will help you sustain the money mm. and also help you sustain more dreams, things mm. that you want to achieve. Because this is not just all I want to do, you know. I, I, th I think I want to venture out into other things and show my other talents. But oh, yes. people know me for this. Sure. Yeah. So one of the big stories this week, a South African woman on Wednesday mm -hmm. went to Switzerland to be assisted with a suicide um, or a mercy killing, as it's called, because in Switzerland, mercy killings are allowed because our law doesn't allow for that. So this woman, uh, I think she had skin cancer. Her legs were affected. Treatment went wrong. They had to amputate one of her legs. Oh. So she's been in pain that she says she can't, she can't live like this anymore. Mm. And obviously South African law doesn't allow for mercy killings or, or euthanasia. And she on Wednesday was in Switzerland to be assisted with a suicide. That is so hectic. And, 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 and I, mean, I don't know what your, 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 your thoughts are on, on assisted suicides. I mean, if your dignity is impaired, you're in pain, you are mm. sick. Mm. I don't think it, 
I don't think it's a question of whether it should be done. If it's if it's allowed, and if I mean, I cannot, I can't breathe another breath. Mm. Take me out, please. Rather, dude. take me out now tonight. Like if what, what, and if a constitution is about the dignity of uh, of people, I mean, if my life is not dignified anymore, yeah. And why also, why am I still here? And I'm on morphine every day. No, man. I can't function without it. There's nothing I can do without assistance. I need to be assisted to get out of here. Rather. Assist me to rather heaven. Rather I. Please. And then, Wena, how do you deal with pain? Whether it's physical, spiritual, mental? I'm a crier. I cry mm. about a lot. I mm. cry at the mere inconvenience of someone coming to pick me up late. I'm very, very sensitive. Says the girl that arrived here late. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there are things in the world Should I cry? Don't, don't do it today okay, So you can taste your own Boston Stop that Okay, Stop I'm sorry that. I'm sorry I'm very sensitive mm. Like anything can make me cry Like I am on point with the tears And it's a real thing But when I'm dealing with something really, really serious Sometimes mm. I fail to emote Oh, yes And the next best thing is to jump into comedy Okay Because it's my escape mm. and it's the it's the one thing that doesn't make me feel awkward sure because sometimes emotions can be awkward they can be really being angry is awkward because mm. you're you're angry alone mm. you're sad alone you're happy alone How awkward you know what's worse though when you are angry let's say you're in your relationship and mm. or you don't understand like why we're here mm -hmm. But the other person doesn't understand what they... I will, I will <laughs> punch you at the back of your neck. That gap between your head and your neck yes. is where my fist will be. Because what do you mean? How important? What do you mean? So my thing is, mm. if I'm upset sure. and you're not upset or you don't know why, you'll see it in my actions. Oh, yes. Mm. Pack the dishes, wash. Now I'm cleaning. I'm spring cleaning. That's sure. how my mom used to do it. And that's how I knew she was always mad. Oh, so you she knew, would be quiet. So you knew dad was in the dog Ooh. box if mom was cleaning. He'd come in and say, uh, Honka vim. Honka, <laughs> if, she, if she dare sees a footprint, and then, yeah. and he would know, oh, okay. Now uh, I, I'm going to the garage and he'll sit there all day mm. until she's ready to speak. And he'll come in and they'll sort their issues out. Next thing you know, they're laughing like it didn't happen. Sure. Yeah. Are you dating? I am. Mm -hmm. I am indeed. So what have you taken from mom and dad into this relationship? Mm. Understanding that people are individuals mm. and not everyone will work to your rules per se. Yeah, and we treat relationships like a person is an extension of you. Exactly. You know? So that was learning how to remove myself and see it from... A bird's eye perspective like how am i affecting this problem in the relationship how am i contributing to this or how's this person experiencing me yes because that's also something and if i was experiencing me would how I would i feel would i be fine with it i wouldn't and that's what stopped me from being such a sulky human i was very sulky as a mm. child like i'd sulk at everything mm. and my mom told me in life you can't sulk you must speak mm. if something is uncomfortable tell someone until then, they'll never know what the issue is. Absolutely. So communication's always been something that I've tried to work hard at mm. and something that I'm trying to get better at as well. Mm. So talk. Don't incite. Talk. Use your mouth. There's this big debate about a man must. Oof. <laughs> where do you Tricky subject. Where, where do you stand there I on, mean, a, on a man must? Depending on what the must is. Mm. Often it's related to a man must spend money on me. Or a man See, must so, um, unfair allowance. See, a man must... Oof. You, you know what I mean? I'm maybe to, to a degree I'm at fault. I'm very hyper-independent. Mm. I don't rely on anyone for anything. Sure. And I've learned that from a very young age, my parents were always like, you need to be self-sufficient. Mm. And mm. self-sufficiency also comes to the detriment when you're in certain situations with friendships or relationships because then... You're not giving the other person the opportunity to let them handle something. Sure. So now everything is at a defense. Like, if you can't help me, oh, well, okay, fine, it's fine. No one is here for me. And I don't want to ever walk around with a chip on my shoulder. Mm. But I think learning how to grow into allowing people to do things and not having it as a must mm. becomes easier. Because mm. then the reliance on someone else isn't so big when they can't. Absolutely. And, you know, that's a, a conversation we had with, with my ex-wife the other day that she was complaining that because my love language is providing and mm -hmm, giving, mm -hmm. 
I do that like yeah. Even if I have nothing, I'll provide. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she was saying, but she also allowed it to have her sit back and relax. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm, and despite mm-hmm. the fact that I would say, dude, there's a project. Go work on this thing. Mm-hmm, go work on that. Mm-hmm. Let's work on this thing together. But because she knew that this guy, he provides for his kids yeah. no matter what. Yeah. You almost become a passenger yes. in your own life. Yes. So you're watching life happen to you. Exactly. And you're not experiencing life. Exactly. Yeah. And and we were laughing about it that, you know, if we had a better breakup. It would have been different. And, and I was one of those better exes that said, yeah, you're on your own. <laughs> no, she was literally saying that she'd literally, she'd literally be on her own because she got so used to that I provide. Yes. And that I haven't stopped providing. Hmm. You know what I mean? Hmm. So, so, hmm. So, so I think often we allow that to creep into our relationships. Yes. That we forget that you are still an individual unit. Yes. I guess there's a saying, yes. the person is not your better half. You are f- both full and, and you, meet you meet a complete a yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Yes. You know what I mean? This this I've always had a problem with my better half. Mm. Because how was I living life without you? Exactly. Oh, if you leave, mm. I'm crippled. That's mm. wrong. That is wrong. But to answer the question, or to ask the question, so should a man abeche? Look, or abeche sana. No, Ushap, Arbechana. Like if Yabata Kitlaits, if Wabat Kitlaits, like for me. Like I said, in my mind, I'm mm. very self-sufficient. If how get it, not get it. I get Emily anyone. Mm. But it would be cute if you were to like for the day. Mm. You know, like you know, it's cute. It's yeah, cute. Because I mean, who doesn't want to be loved? Who doesn't want to be spoiled? Absolutely. Who doesn't want to be appreciated? Mm. It would be really nice. Sure. I don't be. I don't. I don't think it should be a must. Mm. I beg to differ. Other people's needs are different. Absolutely. But for me personally, mm. it's okay if you don't. Now, another of the big stories uh, this week, uh, auction of Nelson Mandela's possessions uh, has been suspended as South Africa fights to keep them here. So obviously, uh, you know, there's a ton of Madiba stuff uh, that was supposed to be auctioned in New York. It includes his Ray-Ban sunglasses, Madiba shirts, personal letters. He wrote from prison, as well as a blanket gifted to him by former US President Barack Obama and his wife, Michelle. So his daughter, Dr. Magaziwe Mandela, says the building a uh, memorial garden mm-hmm. in Kunu. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on the fight for Madiba's stuff? Okay. Where are the hearing aids going? <laughs> Why are we selling <laughs> the hearing aids? This is my problem. There's always someone who's ready uh, to hear things the way Madiba heard wow. things. Wow. Do no? you want to hear his inner thoughts? Ex- then, exactly. My thing is, you know what? It becomes... You know what? what's crazy is mm. that... These things happen every day. Sure. Ne? Mm. They happen every day, everywhere in South Africa. Mm. It just, it's, on the, it's in the spotlight because it's Nelson Mandela and his legacy. Like, these are things that you would want to keep. Mm. But now there's a dispute in the family. You know what my argument is? And, you know, I'm hearing people saying it's the father's stuff. It's a family affair, but out. But also at the same time, it's Madiba. Sure. And this is part of South Africa's history. Sure. This is stuff you'd see in a museum yes. in a hundred years. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, right now, um, uh, Africa is busy fighting England, saying we want our stuff back mm-hmm. from your museums. Mm-hmm. And England are saying to Ghana, we'll send you back artifacts, but it's a loan. You know, the English are on some. How does that? It's my stuff. How are you loaning me my things? You took my stuff. What do you mean? And I want Kadima. Are you crazy? So, so my thing is. Given where we are as a continent and how we've lost everything mm. to museums around the world, I agree that Madiba stuff is part of our history. It is. Uh, okay, maybe if it's a toothbrush, you can give it away. But it, an ID document is part yeah, of our no, history. Yeah, that's, no, that's, that's big. Anything that was in Robin Island, that's part of our history. It's really scary, though, to see. Because it's like we're losing the things that... I don't know. It, it, it almost feels like we're losing a part of ourselves. That's what it is. It feels like... So So then what trumps what, though? Um, South African history, legacy in a museum over, it's our father's stuff, we're going to sell it. And to tell you the honest truth, if you need money for a garden, the Mandela name can raise money for a garden today. That's my point. So why do we have to go into his hearing aids <laughs> and say, guys, take this seventh hour? 
No, guys. To build a garden. No, no. Be because there's not enough memorials for Madiba in the uh, country. As a family, let's use our oh, Medula Oblanga. Please, together, let's let's brainstorm together. You, you can't have one pe saying here is his ID mm. and I did the ID and that belongs of a former to home, president. And it belongs to Home Affairs, surely. It's, it's government surely property. They should put it in their museum. Exactly. But now you're sitting with someone or a family who is now fighting for their rights for building something in their legacy and their father's legacy. Mm. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Dude, there's enough of us who could um, actually donate money to build this garden. Randa each. Exactly. We don't need to be selling Madiba stuff. We, we don't and, have to. And Madiba's name is so powerful. In fact... I, I've even abused my diva's name myself. Uh, we were in we were in Miami. <laughs> we were in Miami for the Winter Music Conference, and we wanted to go to Live Nightclub. Yeah, Live is one of the hottest clubs, not only in Miami, in the world. Mm -hmm. And the way the clubbing works overseas, there's a door system. How can you fail? Okay, you don't just come and pay and go in. Okay, there's literally the cordon it off, and people wait oh, wow. to be allowed in. Oh wow! wow, wow. So you see an old sixty-year-old. Playboy looking guy with six models. Jeez. They let him in because he's booked the table. So, so we're standing there. It's myself, Euphonic, I think Fista. I can't remember who else. It's early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So I go to one of the security guys. <laughs> I'm like, listen, man, um, you know, we flew 18 hours from South Africa, you know, my, you know Mandela. And um, we, we can't, we've been here for an hour. <laughs> we, yeah. And he's like, yo, man, my man. We're like, and because... Generally, bouncers are fascinated by other big guys. Yeah. It's like, yo, my man, you're from Mandela's land. <laughs> he let us in. He let Just us in. Just by that. He let us in. And then the next day, saw us again. It's like, yo, that's my man's from Mandela. Oh, no. Come. Mandela opens doors, even in clubs, guys. <laughs> you won't try that here because we all know the truth. <laughs> you're going to stand at the back of the line. They'll take you out the front and say to the back, how do you know I'm not part of the Madiba clan? No, you because do that. you can tell. <laughs> in the eyes and the nose. It's in the eyes and my, the nose. My, my sonar nose is letting me down. It's really letting you down. So where do we catch you in action? Where do we support your, your, your craft? Um, you can find me on social media. On Instagram, it's at Verify. Yeah. On Twitter, it's at Verify. On TikTok, it's The Real Verify because there's so many people who want to be like me. Hey, these, cool. e these Egyptians are hey. coming okay. for that name. They want me and they won't get me because I'm the only one. You understand? <laughs> there's no other one like me. So yeah, you'll find, find me there. Find me there. Maybe on your TV here and, and there. And then on our screens. Where do we find you on our screens? I mean, I'm working on a couple of things. Can't say, right? Mm -hmm. Like what now? But you know, you'll, you'll find me. You'll see me. When you see mm. me, you'll catch me. Now, a lot of kids literally want to be influencers. A lot yes. of kids want to be YouTubers. A lot of kids want to be internet famous. Mm -hmm. What pitfalls would you like to throw out there to kids who are trying to get into what you're doing? I think always expect the worst because mm. it doesn't always happen overnight. Okay. Nothing happens overnight. In fact... Um, if it does, it's probably by going viral. And even then, mm. you're not guaranteed anything. So mm. plan plan accordingly. Have a plan. Like if you want to make content, drop a content plan and say, this is what I want to do this week. If you're mm. going to do YouTube, it requires a lot of work. It's a lot of dedication. And consistency. Consistency is key. Because we don't see you often enough. We don't yes. know you. And, and and also, we like giving up when we realize that, oh, no one is watching. Yes. Keep posting. Keep posting. Please keep posting. Even if you get one like, Be keep posting. Because the day one video blows up, uh -huh. then they want to go back to all the other stuff. And all of them will start catching up. Exactly. And then your page will, it'll grow. But I think consistency is key. But also, just prepare yourself for anything. Mm. And also, don't, don't, don't let them rob you. They will. They'll try and rob you. Don't let them give you product and we'll give you this for this. You better say your, your price and stick to it. We'll give if you, they don't we'll, want, then they can go to the site. We'll give you uh, exposure. I, you can't, I can't eat exposure and my landlord can, can receive exposure. Mm. So peace, the money will talk. Your dad is your biggest fan. Yes. How do I convince my parents that what I want to do will work? You have to do it. Mm. We can't talk about it. Parents will say, yeah, but you know, until they see it, mm. they'll know. Mm. And until then, you'll also know, okay, I'm made for this. Mm. I had to convince my dad for like years, mm. like since high school. I was like, I don't want to go to Vids. I want to go and act. Mm. He said, you want, you want me to pay? Farida, you're telling me I must pay? For this case. hundred and something uh, rents there, then you're going to stand in the camera and talk. With this case. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay? Mm. No, you're going to have to think about this one again because I promise you, 
your sister and your brother they did the math mm. farida mm. you what did you do nothing i want to see mm. and then i did it and he was like oh my daughter i said you see and they like that the minute it catches fire all of a sudden you are the favorite daughter all of a sudden they don't call you farida they call you farofa <laughs> My dad would call me and go, "Hi, sister." I said, "Oh, is this you, sir?" The sister okay. of mine. Sister of mine. Exactly. Love it. Um, dude, thank you so much for hanging out with thank us. Thank you for having me. Um, first hang out with you on Metro FM. Yes. So, uh, it, for me, it's beautiful to see you still at it. Thank you. Because a lot of people who were internet famous 4 5 years ago mm. have almost gone to mm. the back burner. because there's new faces all the time but you've been consistent and i think your consistency is what's going to keep feeding you thank you your consistency is what's going to keep seeing you grow okay, and become an even bigger name thank you so much and one day egyptians will come and say listen england is uh, retaining artifacts we want our name i'll be there you guys take nothing it's mine you ladies and gentlemen me. pharaoh fai is about to leave the building this is wow! What a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. Our celebrity guest is in the building. A movie character once said, "Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get." Well, our next guest seems to be a fusion of flavors, some sweet, some spicy, and considering she was once a partner of one of SA's musical icons, some funk too. Please give a wow welcome. Two, the one, the only, Lerato, Lerato Licious, Singadi. <laughs> Hold on, is there Tsambo at the end or not? There is. There is. It's silent. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it was Forrest Gump who said that. I know. When you were sitting on the bench. I know. Yeah. It was actually one of Jabba's favorite movies. We know. Oh, okay. Damn. So you think we had Forrest Gump in our intro randomly? And it had nothing to do with the fact that we know your relationship with Forrest Gump. Yeah, but also I guess you've known him. So you thought it was just a coincidence? No, 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 no. Oh, what an inspirational quote. Ah, ah. okay. No, I we do our research about Asbong. about our people. First thing you do when you walk in here is like I thought we we're going to get tattoos on set. Yeah, like something like spicy. I want to Obviously I don't have as much as you, but yeah. I'm trying you an inspiration. What's your most meaningful tattoo right now? Um it's the one that says we never die we multiply and it mm. says bosso times bossonke and then long live super mega and the jobic skyline Wow yeah So when are we going for a tat Any day you know, do we go to the studio or do they come to us is like a private session Um I see the extra strong You know you know a problem with me and you going to get a tat is then it's going to turn into oh fresh is now dating la ratulishas And then what Oh la ratulishas is now moved on And then oh. what It's tiring. What do you gonna guy when? You're right though. You're right. You're right. Yeah, right. Someone's opinion is uh, is opinion is like an asshole. We all have one. So I'm saying like I can even do a thigh thing or you know, I can have the the ghost. A friend of mine has only ever had bad experiences with girls with thigh tattoos. Um 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 I, I don't wanna, uh he's like the the wall broken his heart. <laughs> I will hack you when you to work someone what you rope it's smooth it says nang next hack you when is he still single um he's single he's Ish. doing very well for himself and he's traumatized by How old tattoos is he? he's in his 30s so i think let's bring him on the tattoo date mm-hmm. you know so now I'll hold the candle Ah, you're not holding a candle you're just your tattoos. give me 10 kri taker ah, oh yeah you're right yeah how's your week been lorato tell us about your week <sighs> my week has been quite interesting mm. um apart from the normal work that i do that just keeps me like very excited so what's the normal work that you do for those that are uninitiated i am a, a marketer i'm okay. an award winning marketer um i am an award winning pr specialist mm. i am a creative i am an activist i am mm. a lot of things and different elements come out on different days as they needed which of what you do feeds your soul the most which of what you do drains you the most being a creative mm. is is what has almost kept me going yes. you know i love it so much and being creative in this country you know it's tough like it's tough from every angle it's tough but don't you also find though that south africans are flipping creative people especially Absolutely. i mean when you look at tiktok alone 
you realize that the creativity in this country that's untapped. Absolutely. That the world is experiencing because no one else gave it a chance. I think it's And also, that's the toughness you talk about. Yeah, and I think it's also like they don't get enough support and mm. training. You know, you can have a million views on TikTok, but how do you monetize that? Sure. They're not taught how to monetize that. All mm. you do is you're trending and and then what? You know, even our government we know doesn't support young creatives who are essentially the future and carry this country on their back mm, you mm. know so they do need the support they do need the training and like you're saying it's very stressful for me because that's what i always fight for okay so i've just become internet famous one or two of my videos have gone viral okay and now people are paying attention advise me what do i do next just keep doing you first of all yeah because that's why people like you mm. you know you're not an actor you're not any of those things keep you're, doing you're not you. a dj <laughs> not anymore are you retired are you, like, okay we like to no, no no this is hypothetical I guess. yeah 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 mm. i think it's just all it is is that you keep your content interesting well done like well produced mm. um of a global standard sure. regardless of what it is so give a damn yes pay attention if, if it's something that you're interested in treat yeah. it like a job sure Treat it like a job. Don't mm. waste your time doing things that are going to be mediocre, but a lot of bother. Mm. And then about the wrong <laughs> hire for the campaign. And then you no. tell us about opening up the industry. Well, I understand when we're opening and no one's coming in. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Is it sustainable what you're doing? Like, are you like for a child who wants to get into what you do? It is sustainable. I've been doing this for 20 years, mm. you know, um, and the way God has almost structured my life is I studied copywriting, but sure. now I'm like, that's, a what, that's what I studied. Okay. Uh, at uh, Boston Media House. What one? Well, yeah. In fact, I've got a RAW certificate. So mine is like a Rand Afrikaans University. Wow. I uh, think I was still in like preschool. Oh, shut up. It's about you, G. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I started there and then I went into eventing. Then I went into PR. Then yeah. I went into marketing as a whole. Then I went into influencer marketing. So mm. I'm well versed across um almost all disciplines within the marketing world. But how important was it for you to keep upskilling yourself though, to keep up to date with the trends yeah. with, even if it's just doing a quick certificate online, doing a quick course online. You know what it is? I'm such a nerd. Mm. You know, I love learning. I'm, sure. Google is my friend. If I hear a word, I don't know, or a phrase or a topic that I don't understand. So I've always been interested in learning. Sure. You know, I'm going to learn even, in my grave, I'm sure. sure. How do I get these maggots not to eat me? Oh my God. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I'm a constant. Like what fertilizer am uh -huh, I going to be? Please. And then I put that in my will. Like, uh, am I preserve be me. <laughs> like, can you please like mummify me so that like they can find me looking intact. Like a mummy. So I've always been yeah. a learner. Sure. You know, I, I haven't really like gone to do like traditional courses where I get a certificate at the end, but I do know that I know more than a lot of people who have done that. Because you stay upskilling yourself. Upskilling, mm. learning, being on the ground, asking questions. Sure. I'm never embarrassed to ask a question. Mm. No matter how stupid I feel it is, but there's no such thing as a stupid question. And you know, I advise a lot of these kids that all the time, that never be afraid to ask a question. Mm. It doesn't matter how basic it seems. Mm. Like, ask the question. Mm -hmm. But even more importantly, if you know someone that knows how to make something happen, mm. don't be afraid to say, I need help here. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm always honest. I'll say, like, uh, right now I can't because I'm stretched. It sure. would be very unfair for me to say, let me guide you and give you, you know, some mm. sort of experience when mm. I know I can't give you a hundred percent of me. That's sure. like robbing someone of a learning opportunity. Sure. You know what sure. I'm saying? And mm. in the industry that I'm in, I think if you don't love it, you won't make it. Absolutely. I was talking about more PR marketing for the vibes. Sure. Because the vibes are very minimal. It looks mm. fabulous and amazing. Mm. And But when you are it's trenches. Mm. You spend 90% mm. of your time in the trenches and the other 10% away from home. What do you say to people who say a lot of, especially the girls in our PR industry, seem to also want to be in front of the camera versus in the background? I keep on my fashion. Mm. You know, it's the ones that are in it for all the wrong reasons. Mm. You know, like I have my 
public, I almost want to say persona. Sure. But when I'm working, you'll never see me mm. on the carpet sure. in front of camera. Mm. I don't even want people to know that I was even there. Sure. That's just what's kept the two separate. Mm. I never want them to get murky. Mm. You know, I won't do interviews. I won't. I'm sure. not there. I'm there to work. That's mm. the capacity I'm there in. So, and I mean, I get that kind of public attention. So, sure. so you've been building your name, your profile all this time. Would you say meeting Jabba almost robbed you of your identity that you were building already? Because then you started being known as Leratoa Jabba. Leratoa Jabba. Yeah. Jabba's woman. Yeah. It, it was really strange because I didn't really anticipate that. Mm. I mean, we dated for three years before anyone even, even knew. Sure. Except like, boy, now you'd be like, mm, <laughs> I smell something here. Exactly. But I didn't think once people knew that I wouldn't be Lerato standalone. Mm. You know, like I didn't, I really, especially because I worked hard for everything that I did. I worked hard for my career. I worked hard for, I was never given everything, mm. anything, mm. you know? Mm. Um, and the thing is now it's gotten worse. And now's the time where I want my own identity even mm. more. Sure. But we are one, like I, you can't say the one without the other almost. Mm. And mm. that's also what I'm fighting for, my own identity that guys, yes, even when we're married, I was still me. Even mm. in passing, I'm still me. Mm. It's just that now I have to live for two people. One, only one is physically here, sure. you know? Um, and I find that even people that I've known forever will say, oh, this is Lerato Jabba's wife. I'm like, yo, Emma Bailey, you can't lead with that. This is Lerato. Yes, the mm. same way you would have all the other times or the mm. same way you have all the other times. I'm not riding on his coattails mm. i never have and i never will mm, 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 mm. so you and jabba meet you keep things under wraps mm. for a while three years when did you realize that this thing is catching fire and as I, in between us or between, outside? between the two of you that this thing is catching fire actually i i think i like it here i think it caught fire six months in yeah but how, how did you meet tell us the day you met lejab i actually met him in like 2001, mm. but we only started dating in 2009, 10. No, man, 2001 is the same time, more than the same time I met you, right? Yes. We did a radio broadcast. Yes, from, your from place. Sunshine's house, Tato um, and Tato in the morning. So, we, <laughs> so myself and Tato and our wife, the breakfast Tato. show, we used to do breakfast with a coffee from listeners' places. So Sunshine was your best friend, best friend south of Josie, and we did the show from Sunshine's house, and that's why I met you for the first time. Yes, yes. So it was around that time. Yeah, yeah. It was around that time, and you know, I didn't rate him. Mm. It just like he wasn't as a man or as a rapper. Yeah, like oh, I, okay. like hey, oh, yeah. like I knew his music, mm, mm, no, but mm. it's not like because I was surrounded by other rappers, so sure. I wasn't like caught up in in his hype, mm, like whatsoever. Mm, sure. And he was just like, the first time I actually spoke to him properly, he was just like, why do you greet all the other guys? Now you just like, give mm. me a wave. Like, is there something wrong with me? Sounds like, like Jabba. You know? <laughs> and, I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, well, no. And yeah. then everything changed the first day I heard Danger yeah. at Horror Cafe. Sure. That's when I really like, okay, now I'm going to really listen to his music. Oh, so, that, so it was just at a cerebral music level. It was, I mean, it was I also tail, wanted to be like... It wasn't your tail going like this. No, I also wanted to be fresh, uh, you know, like fresh and Melanie, True. like Mickey and Minnie. You ah, know what I'm saying? Right. Danger. Right. No, 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 no. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like... I, I've made it to two Jabba songs, guys. Don't what's mess, the second don't one? around with me. Eh? The um, first one is Danger. The second one is... Give a freshly little look at the vinyl back. Yes. So, almost like yes. the travelers check. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Ah. Two. See, you've been music famous before Insta famous. Bona, like, bona. Don't let them tell you before, nothing. Before there was even social media. Before they even watched viral, was you were viral. Dude, I was a video dixin. Oh. I'm in three TKZ videos. I'm in a table video. <laughs> I'm a dixin. <laughs> of course, I'm like dixin. I'm like, I love that. I love that. City boys been up. Bona. <laughs> hey, so, so then And what then happens? fast forward, we found yeah. ourselves and multiple times my mother tried to hook me up with him and I was like, eh, No. But also, but your mom was like a cool chick, though. Yeah. They were best friends. Like, your mom was like so cool. Kitty best friend. Yeah. Stud. 
they've both passed, but I know wherever Where they, they are. are. Both, both say Wildlings, mm. wildlings, those mm. two. Um, and yeah, and it just happened. Like, it wasn't anything that we were both looking for. It wasn't anything that was forced. It wasn't mm. anything that was anything. It all happened very naturally. And mm. clearly there was a reason God had a, a bigger plan because mm. look at how everything transpired. But it was also like a public roller coaster. Mm. Because that's what happens when you're in the limelight. Yeah. Um, how did you deal with that? I mean, initially, honestly speaking, we didn't really have any issues. Mm. You know, in fact, people were so like, oh my God, it makes sense. Mm. Why didn't we think of it? Mm. I think everything came to a head when, you know, he's he'd have outbursts or, you know, issues with like his health. And mm. then he'd go on rants that would eventually affect me, mm, you know? Mm. Um, so that's when, you know, he'd say things that he didn't mean, but once it's out there, it's out there. Mm. And that's what people were just running with. Sure. And that's when the negativity really started to come into our space and our home and our relationship. Mm. But you're, you're a very emotional person. Yeah. So how did you handle all of that? You know what it is? When you love someone mm. and you go into a relationship knowing that that person is not well, mm. you may not know the gravity of it, sure. but you know, and you choose that person. Mm. I chose him and I still choose him to this day. That's mm. why I'm in where I'm at. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I woke up and I chose him every day mm. and I just, I'm, I'm a problem solver. I'd be like, okay, here's the problem. Let me shield him as much as possible mm. because I understand that he's also very vulnerable sure. in those moments and just get shit done, mm. just get shit done. And it also got to, a. I did that for almost 10 years, mm. you know, but I was also becoming a former shadow of myself. I was becoming broken. My anxiety was high. Nicholas Resti, he'd like disappear for days because guys about, you know, mm. like things really started to take a toll on me. Mm. And especially because I was doing it mostly Alone. Sure. You know, and, with, qu and quietly. And that's the hardest thing. Mm. I can't like, when he's saying some wild shit, then be like, nigga, what the fuck? I'm going to see you when you get home. Yeah. Mm. You know, I mm. couldn't say that. Mm. I had to just take you it. You to manage yourself. And that's, that's a lot. When you have to manage another mm. wild ass nigga mm. <laughs> on mm. the side, you mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. Mm. How do you advise someone who is in a relationship with, someone prone to outbursts or depression or just mental health issues? What? You know, mental health just, there's so many like different types like cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say to people. It's a spectrum and a half. Yes. They'd mm. say like, ah, no, why is this person depressed? Like, why? They're yeah, heavy. Smile, smile. Yeah, I mean. like, oh, but they you, don't really, exactly. But they don't realize that it's an illness like cancer, mm. right? And in, with cancer, people die from tumors and all those kind of things, organs shutting down. Mm. Whereas with depression, it could be suicide. It could be drugs. It could be women. It mm. could, you know, you, it manifests. You, you medicate somehow. There has to be some sort of medication and numbing. Mm. And, and now it's just like my love, super, my love for him supersedes all those other things. I always thought like we can fix it. We're mm. obviously meant for each other. There sure. was, that was not ever even a question in my mind. It was just, I would pray to Mudimu Kipatele Badumi and be like, just give me strength to figure this out mm. and be able to keep the both of us and our home and his career and my career mm. afloat. When I interviewed him um, on Metro FM about, about six years ago, what? It was, it might have been 2018, actually, the year of his passing, 2018 or 2017. Um, 2018. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And, you know, in the interview, he was very candid and, and I appreciated it, uh, that about him. And, you know, he spoke about numerous suicide attempts mm. um, and that he knows what, I mean, you know, we, we laughed about it because he, he was that guy. Mm. Uh, it can be self-deprecating, deprecating, but, mm. you know, he, he obviously we, 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 we meant well. But you are the person having to deal with that behind the scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, take us through that journey of you don't know if today it will fail. You don't know if we'll see the end of the week. So like with those, like I think he made the, 
ooh, English bundles are dwindling, like the announcement, mm. or he spoke for the first time about the three previously failed suicide attempts on Garrett Cliff's show. Yes, I remember. I didn't know. Mm. I didn't know about those three instances. Oh, wow. I found out with every, I didn't even find out with everyone. I just saw my phone blowing, like, up. blowing up and I'm mm. like, I'll deal with this later. And I said to him when I got home, you don't understand the ramifications of what you did. There's mm. nothing wrong speaking about it. In mm. fact, I encourage it. But give me a heads up. Mm. Give your family a heads up. Give my family a heads up. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. give me a heads up. And I did also spend a majority of our relationship on Suicide Watch. Mm. You know, there'd be days where I can feel, because we're so connected, even spiritually, that I could feel, her. yeah. So mm. I'd stay up all night, mm. smoking cigarettes, having coffee, or he'd be gone and I don't know where he is for days. Mm. And I'd have to, you know, try and find tracker, track his foot, like, it, it, <sighs> mm. like I know what suicide watch is. Mm. I know what it is. So no one can tell me anything. No one can even say to me, oh, you didn't do enough. Or, oh, you left him. Or, oh, they don't understand that for months I'd be the only breadwinner. Mm. Not because I want to, mm. you know, and I've always been a dual income kind of girl. Mm. I can tell you now it's 2024. I've never said, Jabu, buy me a handbag. Mm. Jabu, buy me a car. But I, I'm not the gold digger that I'm painted out to be. They don't understand so, how much I made for our home, mm. you know, how, by supporting how much gold him. You had to dig. Guide him, mm. make, getting him campaign, working mm. with and for him. As a marketer. Yes. And mm. then I still had to have my job mm. and still be a present and functional friend, daughter, sister, cousin, mamani, mm. all these things while I'm having to do the same for my husband. Mm. And I'm not saying he was like a bad husband. No, mm. no, no, no. So loving, so, just so dealing with gentle, a lot. Mm. so sweet. So, oh, perfect guy for me. Mm. Music. Oh, we like the same thing. Like I couldn't have asked for a better partner. Mm. The depression is what complicated everything mm. because it affects you in so many different ways. You you view the world differently from day to day. Mm. I'd never know what I was going to get. You know, my life was a box of chocolates. Mm. 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 Why didn't you run like Forrest? Because I love him. Because mm. I really love him what, till this day. What's the closest to running you came? The, that I came? Mm. Um, I'll tell you exactly what it was. It was... I had gone on a holiday, right? Mm. And something m major happened. And I was like, you know what? These bags, the Nandidi Keftin, Lidi Bikini, Lidi Ing Ing. Mm. I'm leaving this house, Jabu. Mm. I'm not coming back until one, you choose me. Because mm. for 10 years, you can see I've chosen you. Mm. I need you to choose me. And by choosing me, it means you go and seek help. Mm because we're both going to die. Mm. That's the only reason I left our home. Mm. And I, mind you, I, you see, I didn't say, I'm leaving him. I'm, I'm like, I have to leave so that, because there's never been repercussions to your actions. Well, first base. There has to be repercussions mm. because you're just carrying on and I'm staying and I'm staying and I'm staying. Mm. And you know, I'll always come back. I'll come back home. Mm. Just show me that for once, you are choosing me like I have been choosing you. Mm. And then he left. And the funny thing is, before he even passed, actually, we got back together the day Pro passed. Mm. That's what brought us back together, mm. the day Pro passed. Because we're like, do you see like how short life is? In fact, I think Pro's passing brought a lot of the industry together. Yeah. Because I remember I was in a WhatsApp group that was planning Pro's memorial. Hip Hop, what, what, Hip Hop yes, United. Hip Hop yeah. United. I mean, I was in that group. Yeah. And, you know, from Pro's uh, passing, there's now a Hip Hop Museum, for instance. So I think Pro's passing probably did more for the culture than we'll ever give it credit for. Yeah. Because it brought people together. Yes. Uh, all of a sudden, people are speaking, you know, in the same voice. Yeah. So that was what brought us together. So mm. by the time he passed... People are under this assumption that I had moved out. I was dating. Mm. <laughs> I was dating. Hey, but no. They said I lived with a man. You'd moved on. Nah, mm. nah, I'm living at my best friend's house. I'm crying mm. every freaking day. I'm begging him. I'm all these things. Mm. But now nah, I'm painting as a Jezebel that has moved on with this guy. I mm. live in Lone Hill. Who mm. 
Come on now, no. And now she's back. What about the police? How did that make you feel? You know, you can say a lot of things. You can mm. call me whatever. Like I'm so used to it. Mm. But don't call me a liar. Mm. Don't call me a liar. I'm not a liar. I'm not a thief. Mm. I've been like I'm saying. I've been in this industry 20 years. I have never even as so much as gotten a brown envelope or taken or gifts in the. Sh I'm not a liar. I'm not a thief. Mm. Everything I have, I personally, Lerato mm. Singadi, worked for it. So for me to be painted as someone who kicked Liano out of our home, mm. someone who's running after money. I'm, now the life I'm living is because hey, the policy, the policy. hey, who me not the hour, hey, mm, mm. policies have not been paid out. They are frozen. Mm. They everything at Jeba is mm. frozen mm. and intentionally so, because it was never about money for me. Mm. It was ne the moment you try they they try to like say that. We were not married. Mm. That's what pissed me off. Mm. I'd offered them everything. God, just let me keep working on the music because who else, if not me, then who? Mm. They said, no. God, then what is it that you want from me? Because mm. I'm not giving up working on this music because no one else can. Mm. Take it. Please take it. Mm. And they said, no. So that means that was now they were coming for me. Mm. I can, I'll never forget the day we were at the house because they kicked me out the day he died. Mm. His body probably hadn't even reached the morgue mm. when I got kicked out. And a few days later, I asked for the fam because they kicked me out. I had to go home to my mother's house. I was on Zen. Like, it, I was just in a very, 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 very bad place. Mm. And they stole his body. Mm. They stole his body. I didn't see him. Mm. But we look at each other with someone. So you have no closure in that regard? They robbed me of that. Mm. And I was asking them, what's, what's going on? Mm. The father called me the most, and the family, the most disgusting names. A whore, a gold digger, promiscuous. In front of my mother. Mm. My mother was devastated. Devastated. Because Wenja was having issues with his family. Mm. Let alone me, with his family. There was only one place he would run to. Mm. Even without me, my mother's house. I'm a pele tlakwana because that was their thing. And then I don't eat feet of anything. Tlakwana, I don't eat feet. <laughs> and for, for... So how king? Uh, uh, <laughs> you are no ways. Tozu. Arzame something else. Mi bonzi. Ah, ah, no, no, no. Ah, hey. Even... Um, actually, let's go back. Because now back. I'm picturing Tozu. And that moment was actually... That day, mm. when I left the house, after bang, they wouldn't even let me get into the house to get water mm. in my house. Mm. And when I stepped outside our gate, a voice, I shut you not, said, you better fight this, mm. right? And at first, I looked around and thought, okay, no, there's no one. And he said, yo, you better fight this. Mm. And I remember saying out loud, like, what are you talking about? How? Mm. That voice said, don't worry. Mm. Within less than 12 hours, I had a lawyer. Mm. They came to my house. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know how to do this whole thing. I didn't know. Mm. But I was guided to do it. And sure. that's why I am still here. Mm. I, I, you know, I, I always feel so strange saying that I was guided to fight. Mm. Because also remember, my situation is not new. It's been around for decades, mm. maybe even centuries. And in fact, yours is actually mild. Do you your, know what I'm saying? Is very mild. But there hasn't been women that have had enough strength mm. to do that. Mind you, I don't even, it took me years to be able to grieve because in that moment, I had to park the grieving and Auto, fight. Uh, yeah, autopilot now. Yes, and autopilot. fight. And it then triggered like, actually, this is what happened to my grandmother. Mm. This is what happened to, and it's all these conversations that I, maybe overheard or they all started coming back and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> wrong one right there, mm. you know? And mm. the rest is. Where were you on the day of the funeral? I was there. Mm. Uh, I wasn't wanted. It was very clear. 
Okay, let me rephrase that. Where were you mentally? Oh. In terms of not the loss, but everything else. I was in shock. Mm. I think, firstly, because everything that happened and how his funeral was and how everything was handled was everything he did not want. Mm. And regardless of trying to articulate that to the family and anyone, mm. no one listened. Mm. So I was heartbroken to even see that the picture they used was a picture he hated. Mm. And it was pixelated. I couldn't believe mm. they were using a pixelated picture. Why? W would you, you know? Would you say it's important generally that we have wills, we have living wills. He's got a will. So that, uh, maybe like a, a living will and instructions on what I want, what I don't want, for mm -hmm. instance. I mean, a friend of mine lost his mom uh, the other day and she is on video giving instructions to the T yeah. about this is what I want, this is what I don't want. Um, I want my funeral in three, in three days, I want to be in the ground. Um, my son will mm. handle this, this uncle will handle that. But you know why they, she did that? Mm. Because she knows what the possibilities are and she's seen mm. what happens mm. when you don't do that. So, That's why she did that. She's mm. safeguarding her kids. Mm. Grandkids, husband, if she has one. Because, because the uncles, when the uncle, once the uncles swoop ah, in there. Once they pull up, yo, if people have a strong pull up game, mm. give them my loom. Mm. You don't, you don't, you don't even get a chance to. And that's why, like, I believe that everything happens for a reason. Like, Akabe mm. dressing. Imagine if I was, mm. I wouldn't have been able to see the fuckery that's happening. Mm. I, like, I wouldn't, you know, I, I, you know what I mean? Mm. Oh, everything happens for a reason. And it's, it makes sense. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty, And mm. it's making sense to me right now. Wow, everything had to happen that way. Like, as much as I was robbed of the closure of not seeing him, you know, before he, he got buried, the last memory I have of him is not that. Mm. It's not that. Mm. You know, so it doesn't haunt me. Mm. It doesn't haunt me. Mm. You know, like everything has happened as painful as some things have been. And a lot of them have been. It happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Yes, I'm a marketer. I'm amazing. But I've learned that's not my purpose. Mm -hmm. That's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. But my purpose supersedes me. My purpose is not even just about me. It's about women. Mm -hmm. And how hectic the world is for us. So you are from that school that says, don't waste a crisis, especially your own. <laughs> Grow from it. Learn from it. Mm. Mm. What I understand? All we can do is try. And like they say, you must learn from an ambulance. Ola, what's am I? People, people. Mm. Try, but move. <laughs> yeah, you have to. <laughs> Keep because stagnant water stinks. Absolutely. You know, and mm. I mean, it's been what? We're going for year six and it has not been easy. You, you guys are still in the courts, in and out of the courts. So, I mean, without jeopardizing. Get a Concord, the highest court You're in the You're going to Concord now. Yes. So what's being argued at the Concord right now? The same thing. Mm. That we were not married they don't recognize me as his wife. Mm. So now it's a, it's a precedent. I understand? Mm. The same thing they tried to do, mm. which was separate us for all of eternity. Mm. We're now in the law books of the Republic of South Africa mm. as a unit. Mm. Like, now our legacies are completely intertwined. Mm. You cannot separate us. Mm. You know, so that's why I know that. And that's why people say really vile things, mm. especially on social media. You know, I generally don't take notice it's it's whatever and also there's nothing that hasn't been said about me 100 percent of it lies mm -hmm. you know and but once they the only thing that upsets me is when they say i left him for dead because mm. they have no idea what i went through mm. right up until that day the mm. only reason my stepson did not find job was because i was looking for him i couldn't understand why i couldn't reach him mm. That day, the person that saved my life was Tasso. Mm. What happened that day? Because Tasso was the one, when I couldn't reach out, I found Tasso who lived close to us. So Tasso, just go check. If he's wilding or whatever, just tell him I'm on, I'll come. I'm mm. on my way. I'm doing my hand mid ramp, but I'm on my way. Mm. And he went to the house. And as I was driving, he said, like, Jabba's gone. I'm like, no, I'm coming. Like, you know, mm. call my discovery broker, like, 
ads, please get a helicopter, cops, ambulance, straight jet. get every form of anything. Mm. And if it's a false alarm, I'll pay for I'll sure. pay the, for the consequences. Mm. Mm. And it turned out to not be a false alarm, you know? Mm. And Tasso was like, one thing, I'm not going to let you get into that house and see what I saw. Mm. I'm not, like, it's not, it's mm. like, fight me, do mm. whatever, but I'm not opening that burglar bar mm. for you to go in there. And you saved my life because I probably would have died mm. right there on the spot. Mm. So imagine all of that, all of that and trying to grapple like, and like, what the fuck do you mean? What do you, like, nothing made sense. And then while you're still trying to see if you blink, like, it'll all be like, oh, mm. just one of those vivid dreams. And then you get kicked out of your home. Mm. You can't even use the bathroom in your bedroom. Mm. Like, that's a, for me, that's a level of cruelty I cannot understand. Like, more than anything, it's so cruel. Mm. It's so cruel. I didn't think, uh, it's just beyond. Actually, there's no, there's no words for that. What's next in this regard? After Concord, what are you hoping to see happen? I'm hoping that I can now focus on myself more, mm. my journey, you know, because we're intertwined. There's no, there's no two ways about it, you know, but I also want to try and you know, when you, when you say move on, people think, oh my God, you, mm. got, move, you have to move on. Mm. When I, I'm, I'm, I'm as hot as I am, I still don't have a firstborn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want kids. Yeah. I want a family. Mm. I want, you know, and the, like, I wish I had kids while my mom was still alive. Mm. Like, you know, there's so many things that I feel I have robbed even myself of sure. mm. that I want to fix. Mm. And and those are those moving on is hard, especially when some, it's someone that is as loved and as respected as Jabu. Absolutely. You know, like just dating anyone is going to be a nightmare. Mm. It's going to be a nightmare mm. because mm. they're all going to look at this guy and like, you're not even good enough. <laughs> and don't, you know what I mean? You're not no, good hey, enough. Hey, you're hey. just not mm. good enough. Mm. There's a new TV show. <laughs> What? A show? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? There's no TV show? <laughs> What's about the Star Wars reality shows in this country? So Absolutely. <laughs> Tell us about the show. You know, the show is a group of women. What's the show called? Widows Unveiled. Okay. And it is a story of five women who lost partners that were well known, mm. you know, because I've never viewed Jeb as a celebrity, sure. you know, in, uh, no, mm. you know, he mm. was Chabulani, he was Moto, mm. he was Yewena, sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and we're basically sharing the truth of, of our stories outside of what public perception is. Mm. We are showing that everything is normal. Mm. Everything is normal. How you feel is normal. If you want to, cry the whole day, not leave your bed for three days, it's normal. Mm. If you want to go drink with your girls and just get wasted and wake up with a three-day hangover, mm. it's normal. It's normal for you to feel a gaping hole. It's normal for you to not want to go to certain places and do certain things because it's so triggering. Mm. It's, it's all normal. And the sad part is, only another widow will, will understand. Will understand. Your, I can, your you challenges. can support me all you want. Mm. You can give me the sun, the moon, the, but there's certain things that also go without saying. I can mm. look at you and know what you need. Mm. And that's what it is. For, that's the reason I did it. Aside from maybe telling like some of my truth, sure. you know, it's just to show that it is normal. Mm. And we're five different age groups. I'm the youngest, mm. right? I've also, I'm the one who's also had it the toughest, mm. but I'm also the one that shows them more. Now I'm fighting to live every sure. day. When I wake up and I open my eyes, I'm fighting to live. Mm. I'm fighting to be happy. I'm fighting to protect my peace. Sure. And that comes in different ways. You know, mm. my energy is at its peak right now. Like 
I feel lighter. I feel Is that not the best feeling though? Yo, Hamunati Jwang, which is Rosalie, my icon. Hamunati Jwang. I think I think we underestimate the power of just peace and clarity. Absolutely. And and not having to worry about you know there's things you can worry about yes you know the bills and everything else but where your mind is just akida actually that's how I feel. ah akida ah you know and, and where and where you know the stuff not to sweat the things you can just let it go just let okay it, yeah ah wang ish oh you don't, you don't want to do business with me anymore okay, no, it's, fine. Sure. it's okay that's exactly where i'm at mm. that is ex- and it's so liberating, like it's the best feeling. Because my bags of fucks are empty, like sure. mega empty. Guy tin tita this. Ahuna, ahuna nix. And I just turned forty last year. What? A li- everything just fell into place. Mm. I'm unbothered. I worry about a lot of things, but like, mm. Mm? no, no, Karen, I'm I worry about a lot of things, but it's things like, you know, women's rights, like. Mm. Those things that really matter, like what does it, the elections next year, what does it mean for women? What does mm. it mean for GBV? Sure. Because even what I'm going through is GBV. Mm. Mm. It's, it's a form of, G, it's mm. emotional, spiritual, financial, physical abuse. Mm. That's what it is. It falls under the GBV umbrella. So are you saying that generally our culture is abusive towards women? Yes, traditions way, are built. Tra- traditions. Traditions are built to oppress women. And to have women always be categorized under the kids. Oskali, but we have a department of what? Disabled kids and women. Mm. Why are we being grouped? There's mm. nothing wrong with, you know, but why are we grouped as the weaker? And you know, that's one thing I never understood. I remember um, in the 80s, my parents were business people. Mm. And I remember my mom, I don't I can't remember what she wanted to do, but they're married in community property. And because I was, I didn't understand why she needed permission in yeah. writing from my dad. And she put it very simply that our laws treat women like children. You're literally a child. Exactly. And that um, hubby must sign everything off. And Consent I said, form. Like I said, I was a child at the time and I, I, I was blown away. Yeah. That, but, I don't understand. Like how? How how is that still okay? How is this still a thing? Mm. You know what I mean? And I remember even saying to my mom, because her sister was probably one of Africa's first women mayors. This is in the early 70s already. Mm. Uh, her older sister was a mayor. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was saying to her, but, and that's your older sister. She should be the beacon at which all of you are operating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, you know, we break glass ceilings. Uh, we, 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 we are not children. Yeah. I mean, even just the saying where you ask her to so back mm. it's basically saying, how's the wife and the kids? Wife and kids. How's the wife and kids? But it's categorized as so banaba sharp. Yeah. Yeah, because that's your only role. That's your just make sure that people are fair. Kiti tamagochi. Keep them alive, feed them, change their poop, and you know? I that's remember it. I remember um family friend uh, was very sick. Uh, we were still kids and he had cancer. And he made it clear in his will that I don't want my wife to be victimized get this culture mm. he put it in his will mm-hmm. that i don't even want her in black every day for a year i don't want that she must tell you how she wants to mourn me you know that it <laughs> and and dude this is in the 80s it's in the 80s and i remember my dad was the only one fighting for her rights because all the uncles were like this is not how we do things yeah. this is not how we do yeah. things I didn't wear black. Well, yeah. I get out of black as a color, sure. like I've always. But for me, it's like, it's a scarlet letter. Yeah. Like, oh, please feel sorry for me. Or, ooh, mm, stay mm. away from her. She's got, mm. you know, the play called Widowism. Like, and, and if you date, take it bad. Yeah. Mm. To, to, to see you. Like, sure. you know, you can't, you have to stay chained in your mm. house for mm. a year. Mm. How do you do that when now you're the sole breadwinner? You mm. have to work. How do you... But, but, uh, the, you know, Bumalume, but okay, you know what? Now we have to distribute your husband's old possessions. Don't, don't, I'm an adult. Don't make those kind of harmful decisions for me because they're harmful. And we have children still. What about the children uh, where you're now deciding what's going to happen? They operate to on me. a level of fuck them kids. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, and you are one of the kids. Yes. So we will tell you way next exactly and we will tell you if his younger brother might be coming into the house to to carry on the family exactly 
Exactly. Who to sabati? Who to sa? It's it's that's why I give traditions are made to oppress women and keep them in check because if they weren't, why the practice is not the same for both of us? Mm. Why is it not the same for both genders? Mm. I could be weak. You're ill. You're ill over something that is inevitable for anyone that gets into. A, if we had to get married, mm. either you're going to be a widower. Or I'm going to be a widow, mm. or it's going to be a tragic accident where we die together. But life has to carry on either way. The stigma needs to stop, guys. Mm. So widows unveil. Yes, who, right there. Who are your co-starings? Uh, it's a lady called Funi. Mm -hmm. um, she was she's the widow of a petrol like mogul, mm. right? And then it's um, Lerato. Her husband was the Minister of Defense. Mm -hmm. um, it's Siki, mm -hmm. uh, Menzin Gubane's um, widow. Widow. Mm -hmm. um, it's Mposha Balala Mendoza's widow mm -hmm. and myself. What have you learned the most from this group of women? Like the one thing you've taken away from this group of women? Skalas Bani. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm. And we all have different ways of coping. Like, I realized that the older ladies, and when I say older, I don't mean like banali 78. Mm. The older ladies have learned by looking at me, or it's not the end end, mm. you know. And because they got married very, very young, there's all types of things that they missed out on, mm. you know. So they'll ask me, or like, can we try something? I'm like, come on, let's go. You want to go to where? To a club? Mm. And drink what? Ah, come. Because also it doesn't help that you guys' morning is policed. <laughs> Come cake, okay? <laughs> Come cake, okay? You can't even take a picture smiling. Five years later, ah, she's smiling. She must be Scar dating teso. again. <laughs> uh, look. No, no, I'm laughing at disbelief because like, I, I don't... It's, I, it's so sif. It's so, like, yo, 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 yo. It's, and I don't understand why they think we'd be disrespecting our, our late husbands. Like, like, so, you know, the easiest thing for me mm. during this process would have been for me to say, I, I don't care. You know, at Jabu Hayo, mm. you know, he, he left off his own hand. I can, I can fucking I, next. You know, at, let me mm. just try. Do you know how hard it has been? Mm. Emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially. Mm. Because I had to start from everything I'm wearing, everything you see, I start from zero. Mm. They took everything. I didn't even have a home. Mm. You know, everything we want. Mm. I'm carrying that because I understand the truth is pri priceless. Mm. I would not be able to live with myself if I didn't fight. Sure. Never mm. Where do we watch Widows Unveiled? On Showmax. Update your app. Get the app. But also you can catch me on billboards. Catch me on a billboard near you. Uh, take a picture tag. So how many episodes so far? No, we're done, Shiri. Are you done? It's 10 episodes, yeah. Okay. Are they all up? Or is no, it one once a week? a week. Once a week. So when does it go up? Um, I think either the 9th or the 12th. Okay. Yeah. Well, they'll they'll be put the, out comms. They'll be the first episode. Yeah. On the 9th or and the 12th. And then not just realize everything that's happening, I'm seeing it in real time with everyone. Ah. They, so uh, if there's like some wild stuff. So there will be wild stuff. And then next is John, I'm going to keep you know, saying sure. It's, it's exciting. There's it's never weird. a reality show without tension and drama. Hey, man, I'm just always, I'm just there for the vibe. So how is the tension <laughs> and drama between five or six widows? How would that manifest, typically? It's not great noise. I mm. can't do, I can't say that I feel like, like I was saying, protect my peace. Like, just yeah. don't come here with like, don't be weird. Like, mm. why are you being weird? Like, it's, it don't, don't exhaust me, you know? Like, so they may bicker. There is bickering, yes. you know? But like I said, because now my approach to life is, you know, <sighs> yeah, to go by peace, mm. you know? And mm. if you're going to poke the bear, be ready for what will come yeah. from that. Because people who love peace eventually just decide, okay, let's go then. Yeah, and they're mm. the most dangerous, mm. you know? Mm. Because... Mm. And at at that moment, they often feel they have nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah. Because you've gotten me here. So I need you to experience yeah, 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 me yeah, yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, And that's why I don't like... I don't think you've ever seen me angry. I'm, I don't like being angry. I don't think you've ever seen me angry. No. Because when I get angry, 
Mm. So, you know, my don't grand, take me there. My, my granddad, I remember when we were kids, um, because he's big boned, he often reminded us that because we're big boned and the power that comes with that, mm. you must be slow to anger. Mm. A lot of my patience comes from my granddad always advising us that always be slow to anger. Mm. No one has ever done anything stupid when they were yeah. slow to anger. Yeah. Because the minute it gets there, mm. shit is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Someone might even die. Yeah. And, 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 and he was saying, he was speaking from experience, that he's seen family members lose it and literally people lost their lives. Yeah. That be slow to anger. That's the best Count advice. to 10, breathe. Mm. A friend of mine is in business. She's a very emotional person. Mm. She's like a firebrand. But she's never counted to 10 until I advised the October, November last mm. year. She says her business has turned around in the last three months just from breathing. Just breathe. Take that moment. Just breathe. Breathe. Yeah. breathe, guys. Hair mascot. Breathe. In and out. <laughs> Slower, though. <sighs> Lerato, I could chat to you like for forever, dude. For hours. Yeah, man. You know, I've loved you from day one. Lina. I've loved you before you even met Jabba. In That's fact, the thing, you know, is separately. I know you guys separately. I, 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 Kante, as I'm meeting you guys uh, parallel. <laughs> like Jaws. Can I tell you a story about Jabba? <laughs> so Jabba comes up to me and says, Hey, uh, Rotman, you know, my brand is starting to take off. Um, can you manage me? So I had offices near the, the zone in Rosebank. Mm. And I told Jabba, listen, we can help you set up your... Because I don't like managing egos and talent. Mm. But we can help you set up systems, uh, bring someone in uh, that we can teach mm. um, to set up a business, a company, and everything else. You know what blew my mind the most about when we're helping Java set up his company mm -hmm. and everything else? He was using a Bob T card. He had his Bob T card. I was like, Jabba, we need hey. to move you from this. <laughs> this guy. Do you know how many expensive wallets are? Uh, hey, card holders. This guy never said says patch. Yeah. What's my spot? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm like, my man, I just bought you a Mont Blanc card holder. <laughs> Come on. He's like, I can spatch that. Like, so, so, so he, that kind of guy. Yeah. So, so he brought he brought some people into the office. I think Siabello was there. I think his cousin was there. Mm. They spent three months with my office. Mm. We literally helped him set up his business operation, set up everything, get rid of his Bob T card. Mm. And he flew because he was a fast learner and his team were fast learners. And you know what? That shows in the kind of person that even what he became to others after him. Yes. A teacher, mm. a, a mentor, gave so much of himself. And, you know, and I guess that's a, but that's a topic for another day. Like, mm. You'll be back for part two, though. After show, after social media 10 episodes. Yes. We'll, we'll then we'll unpack Absolutely. what we're both watching in real time. So apart from on Show Max for Widows Unveiled, mm. where do we catch you? Where do we support you? I mean, um, if, I I, if I need someone to do marketing for me, like where, where do I find your expertise? <laughs> I want to say DM. Nicolas LinkedIn. But mm. people now use LinkedIn as a mm. dating site. So I had to just like Yeah, I could you need back. to know uh, which uh, salary bracket you're trying to date. Maros like, where I'm trying, like, sir, no. Yeah, but Romela CV. I could you never know. DM, uh. DM, the applications. <laughs> yeah, no, the roster still leaderboards mm. and some only chance for someone to just. Okay. Yeah, but Lerato Licious one on Instagram. That's where I'm most mm. um, active. Obviously, X is a bit of a, of a toxic a, tool. A hornet's nest. Mara, yeah. mm. funniest comedians there. Absolutely. South Africans are funny, man. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Without trying, without trying. In the face of fire, of crisis, mm. harte. No. Are fucking next. Ah, that's the one thing I love about us. Rome could be burning, but guess what? We've got a drink in one hand and laughter in our hearts. Absolutely. Amen. And the world could learn from that. Amen. Barato, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks I for love having you me. Long time. Looking forward to seeing you on Forever the TV. Forever and a day. And hopefully your show will remind people that you're not you're not alone in that's, dealing that's with um, this aspect of our culture that for some reason we are slow to want to fix or amend? I think once the stigma lifts, mm. I think that's the first part. It's like, you know, with HIV before, mm. when it, 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 it came and started 
you know, killing people. Everyone mm. was like, oh, don't touch him. Mm. It was such a stigma. It mm. was, you know, and with educating and with people that were fighting to fight that stigma, mm. we can, we know that it's treatable. We know yes. it's not contagious from touch, sure. etc. Mm. So I'm hoping for the same for this. Ladies and gentlemen, Lerot Delicious is about to leave the building. Catch her on Showmax, Widows Unveiled, um, starting in February. Yes, sir. Cannot wait. This weekend in SA is voter registration weekend, a chance for young people to sign up so they can vote in the elections. Yes, the complainers will moan that it won't matter, but it will matter that you did vote. Let's put it in another way, since people love to complain. How can you make a noise and argue if you're not even watching the match. How's it, Bafana? Support you. <laughs> it's in that spirit of harambeness and Bafana Bafana going to the semi-final of the uh, 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 beating Cape Verde that we wish you all a wow week ahead. Coming to you from Amp Studios downtown Josie, we're part of the Africa Podcast Network. Shout out um, Trevor and his crew at uh, Pezulu Works for the cinematography. Otis the Flo Fraser for all of our imaging. Our guests, Ferro Fee, Ferro Fai, and Lerato Singadi. Creative producer, Krivesh Mohan. And show producer, Kele Zomadisa King. Yeah. Email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Till next week, have a great week in spite of yourselves. Sintanda, don't get my cat.